So I'm going to talk today about a little bit about when I was in around. How old are you guys? How old are you? Nine, nine years old. I'll eight, talk. Eight, 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 nine. nine. <laughs> Good. Now that's important that you don't know how old you are. Now, <laughs> well, uh, so I'll talk about basically when I was in around your age. So, so I was born in 19. What year do you suppose? Any guesses? 19 something. Oh, oh, 52, huh? 55? Oh! Love them. Yeah, I know. 54. No, you were in the wrong decade. 1960? Oh, thank you. This is, uh, they said this was the best class, and it is the best class. 43? No. But, 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 but. You got the right, the three is, is accurate, okay? Now, you're in the wrong decade, though. It's, see this? That's why you get the prize. There is no prize. But if I had one, I'd give one to you. 1933. I was born So therefore, in 40, math majors. So I would be your age in around what, a, a time called World War Two. Two. Yes, I was. I was your age around World War Two. So I'll go in a little bit about World War Two. What I would have done when I was in World War II. First of all, there was rationing. Cars, for example, would have a little sticker on it, like you have an inspection sticker now, A, B, C, D. And if you used it in business, they gave you quite a bit of gas, and then w drove over 12 miles, they gave you another amount of gas. Just personal pleasure, they hardly gave you any gas at all. So that was rationed. But it wasn't rationed because of, of, uh, of gasoline. It was rationed because at that time, tires were made from the uh, Asian islands. It was, uh, it was rubber plant. Later on, we came on and we changed the, the composure of a tire. But the reason they didn't want you driving uh, the car is that they didn't want you um, wearing out your tire. So it was a shoes, two shoes a year. You could have two shoes a year. So basically, you got shoes when you went to school, and then you got shoes Easter. Those were the two times you could buy shoes. Uh, sugar, I would go to what they call a corner store. Now, if you look at some of these smaller stores around, that's what they were when I was your age. Basically, they were on the corner, so in case uh, somebody had a car, which most people didn't, but in case you did, there would be you could park because... The, the store was on the corner. Usually they were regular houses, by the way. They were just the first floor of the house and people sold things. Now, what they would do with sugar, you would go to a store that you went to all the time. Now, you people may go to a Shaw's, Stop and Shop, Market Basket, you go to st stores like that, you know. Well, we would go to the corner store. Very seldom would we go to one of the larger stores, which was like the First National or A&P. Those were large. People didn't have cars, you see, so therefore they didn't have to worry about parking. So there was no parking space for those. But we would go there, and if the owner of the, if you were a good customer, now, now what you would do is I would be sent to the store with a, a piece of paper, none of my business what was on it, and I would give it to the man, and he would go and he would fill the order for me. Now, if he had either sugar, now, I'm sorry to say he didn't have butter. The refrigeration wasn't a, a thing in those days, you know. They had a butter store, cheese and butter store. You'd go to a special store for that. The line would form. Did you ever go to a good movie where the line goes all the way around? That's when they had cheese and butter. The word would spread throughout the city. I was from Wuben. The word would go around, there's cheese and butter. And we would go in the line, and the guy would yell at us, and yeah, you know, he'd give us a hundred, give us a quarter pound, and pay for it, you know. Well, from the corner store, though, what the man had once in a while, he had sugar. Sugar. Not, not a five pound bag, mind you, don't be pushy. Two pounds. Two pounds, a little thing, down below the counter. 
Because, see, if people found out that he had sugar, they would be that line all the way around. He'd lose all his sugar. So to, for regular customers, I would go there, and he would, he would reach below, and then he'd, he'd look around to make sure nobody else was coming in. Somebody coming to the store, McKinnon, you don't get sugar that day because if, he, if other people find out there's sugar, so he'd look around, if nobody's coming in, he would reach under and he'd take a little two pound bag and he'd just put it, he wouldn't say anything, he'd just put it in there. At the end of the week, my mother would come with the money to pay for it and she would pay then for the sugar. Now, here's the, here's the card, if you, if, I don't know, have I talked to you kids before? Anybody here I've talked to before? Yeah, okay, that's good. Now, here's a card, okay? I was, I was, uh, t I went on that, how many people went to the parade? The parade the other day, did you go to the parade? We were, uh, Mr., yeah, <laughs> Gil Santos and I were babies. We were in the, we were in the hundred year old car with Mr. Riley. And we said to Mr. Riley, how long have you been in business? And he said, well, my father, I didn't realize his, his parent, his father started the business and they used to bring coal and wood. That's what they would deliver, not, not oil in those days. So, okay, here we go. Here is this card that my mother would say, Donnie, we were the back door McKinnon, so we were down in the cellar, like, you know, but we did get up to the first floor. My aunt and grandmother lived on the second. And, and I would go up and say, put this in the window. And she'd tell me what, which way to put it up. See? 5, 15, 20, 10. Put it in the window. Okay, now it's in the window. What number do you think is important on that card right now? Ten. Okay, ten. Yeah, ten. Okay. What do you suppose? Why was I doing? Was I crazy? Well, th that's another. That's for another time. I'll tell you about that. But but why? Why did I put this card in the window? Put your hands down, please. Okay. Oh, okay. nobody raised them. <laughs> Anybody got any idea what this card was in the window for? Donnie put the card in the window. No. no. Why, would you, why would you, right? You wouldn't have. The ice man. Ice cream, right? the, no, you say ice cream. Um, the luxury ice cream. The most important thing in the day wasn't ice cream because we didn't have any ice cream. The most important thing in the day was the ice man. The ice man came. Okay, he'd pull up. By the way, no doors were locked in the house. Reason? <laughs> What's the take? <laughs> There's nothing in the house but us, and, and we're penniless, right? So, okay, the ice man would pull up, horse at start, then... He actually had an engine, he had a motor, drive it down, and he'd get a, he had an ice pick. This was not a thing to, you know, don't get him angry. He'd go to this huge piece of ice, and he would chop that ice, 10 cents worth. And he had a canvas to put on his back, and he put the ice on his back. He had this, I don't know, you've probably seen them, these things that would clip the ice, put it on his back, and he'd come into the house and he would put the ice into the, where did he put the ice, by the way, I suppose? Not all at once, please. No. Where would he put the ice? Yes. Yeah, uh, kind of a freezer. See, you get the prize if there was one. Yeah, yes. Well, yes, that's what it was. I'm, I'm going to have to tell you because, it, yeah, oh, he's got the answer two times in a row. You get two no prizes. Yes, and I, you were going to say it. No, somebody was going to say it. Ice, congratulations. Ice box. In the ice box would be, there would be two sections to this. In the lower section, you would put things to keep cool. There was no freezer unit at all. If you got ice cream or something like that, you only got it if the ice was fairly melted because the two sections was one for the ice, and the other for the items that had to stay cool. And the ice would melt, of course, because you had no, there was no such thing. The two things that they weren't that you may have in your house now, there was, there was no air conditioning. So therefore the house, if it was 90 out, it was 110 in, you know. 
And of course, there was no TV. The TV, there was none. So there was. So they put the ice into the ice box. It would it would melt as time went by. And when I got real low, uh, my mother would go to the ice box and open it up and say, "Oh, we need a twenty, or we need a ten, or we need five cents uh, worth of ice now, and that's all we need." By the way, the, there's an irony involved in, in poor people. When I say poor, I don't mean. How's that cat going? Is that a, has that been around? Is there anybody else to see it now? Pass it over to people who haven't seen it, and then we'll. Yeah. Okay. The. Okay. So so the, where was that? What, what was I saying? Oh, people forget what they were saying. What was I saying? <laughs> huh? Poor, oh, poor, yeah. But, but see, we didn't think we were poor. The, the point is, being poor is a state of mind, you see? And I guess we might have been poor, but what? We didn't know it. We thought we were, no, we all thought we were middle class. No, no, we knew rich people. They had a car that you could push a button and the window would go up and down. You didn't have to wind it. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Whoa, here comes the rich kid. And if you were lucky, it would rain, and the, and the button was so new, it locked the window half down so the rich kid would get wet. That was one of the pleasures of our day. So now I'll get back into the icebox. So the icebox is there, the man's out there. But to do this, he chipped ice, you see? And as the chips fell in the truck, as soon as he went, we were all hiding, you know. He all knew we were there, but we didn't let him know that we were there. But he knew we were there. And we'd all run to the truck. And what would we do? Not all at once. But, you know, he'd take the chips. This was the big thing of the day. We took the ice chips. And it was ours. We would take the ice chips. Wonderful. It's a good day the ice man came. And when I say about being poor, the irony of being poor is because there was no refrigeration and things of this nature, we had stuff delivered to the house that you people don't today. Bakery products came to the house. People, you know, people came with items because you couldn't get them in the store because they had to be fresh. And so they didn't have the type of things you have to. So we had things in a way that you people didn't have. It was, so, so as we, now let me give you some of the things in the house. We, every house, not, I'm going to say, most house had a piano. Because, because in those days, families would get together in certain days and we'd get around the piano Someone played it, we hoped, and we'd all sing. We'd sing. It, with the, if you were rich, you had something called a player piano. Does anybody know what a player piano is? Yes, give me, what is it? The, the what? Yeah, it does. It's, it's on a, like a chord, and you place it in, and you, you just push, push the, on the floor, and the thing will turn. And it would play songs for us, play a piano. If you were rich, you had to play a piano. And, but the other thing we all had is we all had an AM radio. Don't tell us we didn't have a radio. We may not have a telephone. We might not even have a toaster. But we all have a radio. And the shows that would come on every week now, you may have shows that something's going to happen, you know it's going to happen, and you laugh anyway. Is that not true? You see a show, they do the same doggone thing every week or so, and it's still fun. Well, that's what we had. We had the same jokes being told by people, and it would be on the radio, and we'd all sit around the radio, the family, and we would listen. I was um, listening to a piano the other day, and we had twin pianos that would play, and we'd all sit around the radio. That was on Sunday. We'd listen to the radio. 
and then they would say the same thing over and over again and the same story over and over again. But let me tell you, this is something which you're going to find strange. Baseball. We'll go to sports, okay? Baseball. They're announcing the game, but sometimes the game was out of town. And the station didn't have enough money to go out of town. So what they would do is they would have it on a, a tape would come in. And as the tape came in, it would tell them what was happening. And it would, the tape would say like, let me see if I get it right now, 6-3G. 6 dash 3 Anybody? Who's a baseball player here? Baseball? What is, what is six dash? Does that mean anything to you? Six dash three? No? Six, six dash three? Yes. Yeah. Shortstop in the first baseman, there was a man who was a scholar. Absolutely. The position of the ball player was one, two, three, first baseman. Four, five, six, shortstop. And this guy would sit in an empty studio all by himself with the ticker tape coming in, and he would say, grab ball down the shortstop, shortstop picks it up, throws to first base, and he, and he would announce the game with a piece of tape in those days. Now, let's assume you're in a playoff game. The Red Sox are playing Cleveland. It's a playoff game, starts at 1, but because it goes into extra innings, now it's 5 o'clock, ball game's on, two men on, two men out, the pitch is delivered, and it hits 5 o'clock. It's time for, it's a bird, it's a plane, who is it? Superman. Superman. It's time for the radio show, Superman. That's the, <laughs> how did the ball game go? I don't know. It was time for Superman. Cut right into that broadcast and give you Superman, Batman, better still, the Lone Ranger. Huh? Sp no, Sp just Spider-Man was later. It was, that's, no, 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 I am man. No, no. Okay, now, now, I get you. Oh, what happened to my picture? Did somebody, did somebody, did everybody see that picture? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll go one more in sports before I go. Okay, I better do this because we're, we're, who's in this picture? Do you know? Yes, yes. Who? John F. Kennedy. You recognize him, and that's very good, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Oh, you got one other guy you may know. Ted Williams? Two for two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This man is on a roll. Ted Williams? Ted Williams, Ted Williams, Ted Williams, Ted Williams. Ted Williams. John Kennedy. Let me tell you a little bit of something about the world of politics in those days. John Kennedy had just returned from uh, the Pacific where he had been... Uh, on an island with a coconut telling people, you know, it was a long story, you should know it. If you don't know it, don't worry about it. You know it. <laughs> and, and his father decided that he'd run for Congress. Now, did he, you know, it depends on the story you read, whether he decided he was going to run or not. Because he had a brother named Joseph Jr., who was uh, Joseph the Second, because that was the father. The father was Joseph Kennedy. And the brother was killed in action in flying an airplane that was just full of bombs that went off in midair. And so his brother was killed. The, the story goes, depending on the story you believe, that Joseph was going to be one day president of the United States. Talk about arrogance, right? Well, that's not arrogance. That's self-esteem, isn't it? And when Joseph was killed, the next son was John Fitzgerald, who was supposed to be their writer. John was the, was the fellow who could write. He wrote When England Slept before he was out of college. So, I mean, he was the writer. 
but they decided he'd run for Congress. So his father sent him down to get his picture taken. He weighed about 94 pounds at the time because he had just got off the island, remember. And he looked like he wasn't going to make it through the day anyway. He was so, so thin. And, and he was supposed to talk to, and I won't ask you who, because if you knew him, you, the only way you'd know this guy is you may be related to him, because we all got relatives, don't we? You got relatives, don't you? Yes. Yeah, we all got relatives. The fella he was sent down to see, his name was Eddie Pellegrini. That's your cousin. No, but it sounded good and the timing was perfect. Thank you. Eddie Pellegrini. Now, what about these other two guys on here? One of them was named uh, Ted Williams. No, I think we kind of know the name Ted Williams. Yeah, he was a ball player, Ted Williams. He was the last guy to hit 400. As a matter of fact, by this time in 1946, he had already, bless you, he had already hit. This other fellow was named Hank Greenberg. Yep, he's your, he's real, no, Hank Greenberg. And uh, the saying was, Greenberg's on third, because Greenberg came back in 45 from the war, and he hit a triple, and they couldn't get him, and he played for Detroit. Greenberg at one time, Babe Ruth at that time had hit 60 homers, so he was the big guy. Greenberg had hit 58, maybe 59. Didn't get the 60th. So Greenberg was one of the greatest ball players that ever lived, as far as Detroit's concerned, as far as we're concerned. Of my day, Greenberg was a very big guy. Now both of these guys were in the picture. And they took the and and Williams kept saying, No, 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 I want to be just with you, Mr. Pellegrini. And Pellegrini says, Hey, Pellegrini was the backup shortstop to a guy they named a pole after the guy he was backup shortstop to. The backup shortstop shortstop's name was There's a pole in, in Fenway Park. No? Pesky, pesky pole. Johnny Pesky was the shortstop. Eddie Pellegrini was the backup shortstop. He went on to coach Boston College for many, many years, Eddie Pellegrini. He came from Dorchester. Now, why did Kennedy's father send him over to see him? Two reasons. What nationality do you suppose Pellegrini was? He was Italian. He was Italian from Dorchester. Yes. And let me tell you about these other two guys, though. These other two guys were both something called Republicans. <laughs> oh. Kennedy was a Democrat. He wanted to get the Democratic vote. And his father sent him over, and he went walking away, and Pellegrini said to the trainer that had set up the interview, said, he doesn't look very happy. And Pellegrini says, the way he looks now, when he weighs about 90 pounds, he says he'll be lucky to stay alive. Says, well, why was he not happy with me? He says, because he wants the Italian votes in Dorchester. He was running for representative at the time. He wasn't running for president. He wasn't running for senator. He was running for representative and he wanted the Italian vote. He didn't need the Republican vote because it, you know, it, it, was, it was divided down the line. Well, that's the story of it anyway. Pellegrini used to tell this story. You put him on the radio if he's around now. He may even be around now. Okay, who plays baseball? Okay, a lot of people. Baseball's still a big sport. What is the sport which wasn't a sport when I was a kid was soccer. Who plays soccer, though? Soccer is, I think it's going to be the sport, isn't it? Soccer, yes. Uh, what is the other thing? Uh, basketball? Anybody play basketball? It's tough at your age to play basketball, isn't it? It's okay to dribble the ball, but how are you going to score, right? Look at that thing. It's 10 feet tall. <laughs> Keeps hitting me on the head. Well, in those days, though, see, you have something called which we did in a fashion coach, don't you? And you are driven basically to a ball field. In my day, we played, I'm going to stay with baseball for a minute now. We played in neighborhoods. 
I'm not bragging about it. I'm just saying the way the neighborhoods were is you didn't go outside your neighborhood except to go to school or to get groceries or something because the neighborhood was, was up a bunch of people that protected their own neighborhood. So they, if you didn't come from my neighborhood, somebody in my group didn't want you in our neighborhood. So it wasn't comfortable. But, but, we all had a baseball team. Every neighborhood had a baseball team. And even though we didn't like each other, I'm telling you, you're going to say for what reason? There was no reason for us not liking each other. We just didn't like each other. You were from the other neighborhood. If this were Rainham, for example, it would be the South Rainham, Rainham Center, North Rainham. You know, some of you come from North Rainham. So, so, so the point is, though, that we would form a baseball team and we would play each other. And during that time, we would take our glove and a bat and maybe a ball, and the ball was wrapped in black tape because the cover, we'd hit the cover off of it and you'd keep the ball. And we would walk to the other side of town. It could be two miles, it could be five miles. We would walk, all us kids would walk, and we'd walk to the other neighborhood's field. We all had a field and we would play ball against each other. Now, of course, if you're thinking and you're following this thing through, I gotta finish this up, don't I? I did this with the half hour. Uh, when I think about it, who's gonna coach us though, because bless you, because all of the people were uh, working during the day and all, and, and so what, who would coach us would be a kid like ourselves, a few years old, you guys, for example, if you had a baseball team, someone from the middle school, Maybe Jake, you know, my grandson, he'd coach you. And the older kid would come in and he would coach the younger kids. You would try out for positions. Um, if, you, if you were no good, they'd still put you in the outfield somewhere. And uh, not, no disrespect to outfielders. But, but then if you, if you were good, you pitched. The number one player was always the pitcher. He batted clean up and he was your number one ball player. And he pitched all the time, by the way. There was no turns. He was your pitcher. Shortstop was the next best ball player on the team, you know. Needless to say, I was neither. But nonetheless, I did play. And so we would go to these different communities. We would play each other. Some older kid would umpire the ball games. And we would, I don't recall ever, even though we did fight a little bit when I was a kid, we never fought in those games, ever. And that was the rule. If you're looking for a fight, you got the wrong place to be. We played our games versus each other. It was a winner, a loser. Um, no real playoffs, none of that kind of stuff. No, no getting together. At the end of the year, we played ball. Now, to play basketball, I got a summer. How many, I got two more minutes? What have I got? Nobody's in charge of the clock. <laughs> Okay, okay. The, the, the basketball, we'd have to sneak into a school to get to something called, for us, a gymnasium. They had a gymnasium in those schools. We weren't allowed in those schools. So we go in, as any good young person would be, in through the window. And we would go in and we'd get on the phone until the janitor, or in the case of the Catholic Church, the Monsignor would come over and chase us out of the building. So we play for as long as we could play until they caught us. That is how we learned about basketball. How we learned about any hockey players here? I got a grandson of Taunton who loves hockey, plays hockey. You ready for the term? Swamp hockey. Oh, you skate on a swamp. You play it on the swamp. Because there were no arenas. There were no arenas. So if the and by the way, you say, what happens if it's no cold? It's not going to get cold? <laughs> you're not, obviously, you're not going to run around in water with ice skates on. Some people couldn't afford ice skates. They just ran around in their shoes. And some of them were pretty good players, too. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is the best group I've had today. I want you to know that. <laughs> I thank you all for your attention. This is a good class. And this is two classes, I hear. Wow.